The AFC Championship features Baltimore at New England. The Patriots lane nine, the total 51, kicking off 3.30 p.m. Eastern uh, Pacific time, I should say, on a Sunday afternoon. Marco, your first thoughts when you saw the line nine, nine and a half in favor of New England? Uh, I thought the line was high. Uh, you know, obviously, I know Baltimore was getting nine points last week, but this is a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. These two teams have played six times since 2007. Four of the six games have been decided by three points or less. Um, the fifth game was decided by six points. There was only one blowout in this, and the blowout was by Baltimore. Right. So, I mean, is there really a nine-point difference between these two teams? Well, let me ask you this, and nobody's talking about this, but I'm going to do it, and it has nothing really to do with this game. But last week when Baltimore played Denver, there were two – well, there was one penalty call and one non-penalty, one penalty that wasn't called that was blatant that I thought changed the entire momentum of the football game. And when I talk about it, Everybody's going to agree that it did change the momentum. Uh, Denver had just scored on the, the punt return for the touchdown to take the 7 nothing lead. They kick off. There's the fumbled kickoff, and Baltimore starts to drive at their own 7 or 8-yard line. Third down and at least 10, let's say, from the 6 or 7. They throw the ball about 30 yards downfield, Flacco does, and it's out of bounds by 5 feet at least where the ball lands. N completely uncatchable. And they call a pass interference on Denver. So instead of punting from their own end zone, they are now first and 10 around the 40-yard line. Two plays later, they score a touchdown. Now, if they're punting from their own end zone, chances are Denver gets the ball up 7-0 around midfield, and who knows what happens. They might still lose the game. The other issue, which was a non-call, was Peyton Manning's pick six, you know, early in the game. He throws it over the middle. His receiver is absolutely mugged. It leads to a pick six on the deflection. After, by the way, the deflection was after the, the pass interference. They don't call it. And I thought those two plays had as much – That's and the reason I'm bringing it up is because I got so tired of hearing everybody complain about the replacement refs early in the season. And I kept saying, do you remember how many Sundays you sit there and watch blown calls? And those two plays, the announcers – Sports Center all week long, they never bring it up. But if those were replacement officials, they'd be saying Peyton Manning got robbed rather than there was something wrong with Peyton Manning in the second half. Speaking of second half, so who do you like in the second half after that diet <laughs> <laughs> All story. I liked him anyway better, but okay. I never saw either of those chicks. Anyway, Marco stole half of my uh, my notes here, but you know, only three times in the last 26 games that the Baltimore's been on the road have they lost by double digits. I didn't see. Maybe it was my own fault that I didn't look. But coming into this week, a lot of sports books will put up projected lines for the following week. Sometimes you can bet on them. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see what the Baltimore line would have been if they would have played New England in this game because I think a lot of people are just assuming Baltimore, since they played the fourth longest game in history, are going to be worn out. And a, lot of, a lot of reports I had for guys who were on the sideline just said it was brutal. They don't know how Baltimore is going to be able to get back up for this. It's interesting to see because of how long that game went if this line is opened up higher, because it, it, with you guys, I, I didn't expect this line to be at nine, especially with the, the series history here. Last year's playoff game went down to a one-point differential. Right. So, and You know, it's funny. Well, let's get to it. This is my free pick. We'll get to it. Listen, last week, Flacco only hit 53% of his passes. He was 18 for 34, but he was able to use extremely – bad breakdowns by the Denver defensive backfield, including Champ Bailey, who was the fault for one of the touchdowns early in the game, not the late pass completion that turned the game around and sent it to overtime. Uh, Baltimore has the type of ground game that can give New England some fits. Um, but here's the thing. One of the things I'm looking at in this game is a proposition. There's a total out there on amount of passes completed by Joe Flacco, and it's 21 and a half. And I do think it goes over. If you look back about the last four or five times these teams have met, each time he's gone over, except for the blowout that you referred to earlier when they were up 24 to nothing at the end of the first quarter a couple of years ago, and he only threw 10 passes the entire game. He was four for 10 because all they did the rest of the game is run that clock and use that defense when the defense was a better in a better situation. I think you're going to see a few more points scored, so I'm leaning towards the over as far as the game's concerned. But I like that proposition. Over 21 and a half, Joe Flacco on number of completions. He's usually in that 25 to 27 mark when he goes up against New England, except for the 33-14 Baltimore win a few years ago. Now, if Baltimore jumps out 24 nothing in this one early in the game, he's not going to get 21 and a half completions. There's no doubt about that. But anyway, that's my plays on this game. We are done for the weekend. We'll be back here next uh, Monday night. I believe we'll start doing some college and NBA 
basketball. If not by Monday night, check back by Tuesday night. We'll have more videos. And be sure to check us out all week long, each and every day, right here at pregame.com and on the homepage, first preview radio, six nights a week. We'll talk to you again next week, guys.